Welcome to episode 33 of Rebirth Revolution. My name is Melissa Olson. This week in the news, we have seen some of the voices that come from those we see on TV every weekday get in trouble for suggesting that we roll the dice and end our current restrictions. They are suggesting this even though only 1% of the population has been tested, there are no treatments, and there is no vaccine. Instead of getting into the errors in the data represented or the stomach-turning comment that it would be a very appetizing opportunity to send kids to school at the cost of 2 to 3% mortality, I think the bigger issue is who do we listen to and why? The men who made the dubious statements have been expressing their opinions to a wide audience since the early 2000s. They were brought to our attention because they had something different to contribute back then. And as many things do, it just kept going. Their success made them rich and powerful, and they have enjoyed having people listen to their every thought. Now in this pandemic, They need to keep that going. Their fortunes need to be preserved. They need to continue to have something provocative to say. They need to continue to have the lights and cameras rolling. They are not bad people. They are just people. People are not designed to handle power. People don't do well when they receive too much attention or when they are revered. This phenomenon tends to remove their guardrails, their checks and balances, and they tend to feel like they are no longer like other people. Their success at Life Matters has the power to drag them backwards in their spiritual awareness level. Add capitalism to that, and their words begin to be measured by whether they have the power to convince others to buy products and services. Their medium is one that is supported by ads, so they cannot bite the hand that feeds them. The fact that they had something interesting to say over 15 years ago does not mean that they need to continue to shape the thoughts of the collective culture. When people who we have listened to start saying very disturbing things, it is the signal that we are ready to hear other voices. We tend to allow things to go on longer than they should. We have a bunch of politicians who haven't done anything of note or anything constructive for decades, yet they continue to get reelected using the money and influence that have corrupted them. But we are too distracted to hold them accountable. We are good at getting on a bandwagon and not so good at recognizing when to get off. We wait until it becomes outrageously obvious that it's time. In the meantime, we are not listening to the voices of younger, fresher minds who are not saying whatever it takes to keep their gig going and their stock portfolio at its fattest. We have these people who have had decades to shape the conversation People who have had the ability to shape and twist the minds of millions of our citizens, and these people do not necessarily have our best interests at heart. Their objective is to preserve business as usual. They don't know what a better world would look like or how to get there. The thing is, they don't know we are going through a rebirth. They don't know that every challenge we face is a golden opportunity that lays bare for us everything that is not working for the whole of society. They don't know that the whole point of this is for us to change and grow. They are heavily invested in making everything go back to where it was before the challenge began. We can't afford to do that. We must make the changes now as each upcoming challenge 
will be even more difficult if we don't have our ducks in a row. The people who are just entering adulthood right now are a special bunch. They will not have the carefree exit from childhood that many of us did. They, in fact, have had childhoods that have been steeped in one challenge after another. It is one thing to not go to prom or not have a graduation ceremony, but the more difficult truth is that their childhoods began around 9-11. Their short lives have seen endless wars, the Great Recession, unprecedented gun violence and school shootings, the threat of climate change, And now, this pandemic that has shut down schools, evaporated job opportunities, and job offers, they have not had a moment's rest. Young people have been told that they need advanced degrees, with the mountain of insurmountable debt that racks up, and then they are supposed to be grateful to accept an unpaid internship. We told them that if they worked hard enough, they could become the best and the brightest who would be accepted to Ivy League schools, a resume entry that would carry them through a successful life. Turns out that was a lie, because many of those college admission spots were already reserved for the children of alumni. Both the parents and the children didn't have the smarts or the work ethic to actually earn their spot there. They just had the money and power to make it happen for them and every generation to follow. The system was, and still is, rigged. The truth is that we are leaving them a world that is massively broken, and we had a very large hand in the destruction. To add insult to injury... We tell them that their opinions of what we're doing and have done are not valid because they're too young to know. Oh, they know. And they know that is an easy statement to make when you know you won't be around to pick up the pieces. As each disaster unfolds, there are those who say, this is not the time for politics. That sentiment only makes sense to those who do not want to acknowledge the role that politics is playing in creating and exacerbating each and every challenge we face. The young people are speaking to their very real concerns for the future, their future. The older voices don't want to hear it because what they say carries with it accountability and the necessity for change. We older people have had our chance. What we did with it was to allow the game to be rigged in favor of the few at a steep cost to the many. We are not leaving behind a government that works. In fact, we may not even be leaving them a democracy. They will not inherit an economy that works for all, a society that is safe, or a planet that is sustainable. We are leaving them corruption, division, and mayhem. We were the greed is good generation, and that attitude polluted every single aspect of life in this school. Again, remember what Einstein said, we can't solve problems by using the same kind of thinking we used when we created them. The problem with older people and older thoughts is that as we age, we become more resistant to change. We become less willing to be wrong. We think our age grants us some special status that we really have not earned. This all keeps us locked into thinking the same thoughts and making the same mistakes over and over again. This results in us listening to the very voices that perpetuate everything that is destroying us. Last week, I talked about the need to get the stories of our elders preserved for future generations. I think clear vision of what is in our rearview mirror is essential to knowing where we want to go next. This week, 
I want to turn the tables. This is exactly the time when the elders need to ask the young people about their lives, their hopes, their dreams, and their fears. This is when the elders need to listen and not say a word to defend what has been done. This is the exact time when we need to find out what we can do to help, or at least find out what we are doing that continues to make it worse. It won't matter in the least what you did with your life if, at the end of it, you recreate that scene from Mad Men where you've had a wonderful picnic in the park, after which you stand up, shake out your blanket, and drive off with all your garbage strewn on the grass. What makes young people special is not the simple fact that they have survived all our man-made tragedies. What makes young people special is that so many of them are really smart, and many entered this earth school at the higher levels of spiritual awareness. I'm not talking about them being religious. I'm talking about them embracing the attributes of those at the higher levels. They are more empathetic. They have integrity. Fewer of them are given to the senseless judgments of others that have plagued previous generations. More of them are willing to stretch all the existing boundaries that we created around gender, sexuality, social norms, and the source of us all. They are less willing to just go along to get along, and that's the gold. Going along is what got us in this shape. Our unwillingness to step out of line, which may draw attention to ourselves, is a powerful deterrent to change. Through our mismanagement, we have shown them every failure in every system that makes up this earth experience. My feeling is that they chose to come here at this time, in the middle of this mess, because they do have solutions. They are smart enough and caring enough to help create the world that is based on the highest of our ideals instead of our lowest common denominator. We don't need to lead them to do so. We need to follow their lead and help in any way that we can. They aren't asking for anything that is outlandish. They want to enjoy the same things in life that were simple to achieve for older generations. They want love. They want meaningful work. They want financial security. They want to be healthy. And maybe they want a family. The world we have left them makes those basic tenets of life unachievable. That's on us. No two people, each with tens of thousands of dollars of college debt, working jobs where the wages have been stagnant for almost a decade, with health care costs that cost more than rent, can reasonably build the future of their dreams. There is always that sword hanging over their heads, ready to drop at any moment. We didn't begin our lives that way. It was all very doable. Almost every job offered enough compensation and benefits that would allow people to buy homes and live their dreams. Healthcare wasn't something you even thought about. The concept of being one hospital visit away from financial ruin was not a thing. College costs next to nothing. We have left them in a mess and then criticized them if they point that out. We owe them more. We owe them our help in undoing what has been done. Now, during this pandemic, you see images of older people protesting the fact that young, poorly paid people should be forced to be available to cut their hair and touch up their roots. All of this at the expense of their own health and safety. All of this without taking into account that we don't have adequate testing, 
adequate protection, any treatment for the virus, or a vaccine. They want their hair tended to, and they want it done now. If young people have to die to make that happen, then so be it. The recklessness and thoughtlessness is astounding. The attitude that we should simply act as if this is not happening is a testament to the deep sickness of our culture. Our young people are magnificent beings of light. They have answers to questions that we haven't even thought up yet. We need to get out of the way so they can do what they came here to do. Imagine everything we can learn by taking in all of that brilliance. We had our time as their teachers. Some of what we taught them was good. Some of it not good at all. Now it's their time to teach us. Be a good student. Stop listening to the old voices that want to preserve what is and seek out new voices that illuminate what can be. We can't get better by listening to those who are attached to the low-level motivations of money and power. We have to dig deeper. This may seem like harsh criticism, and maybe it is. Fitting in to our current social structure is where we are taught to live an ordinary life. Once you grow past that, once you see how limited and unsupportable the current structure is, you're ready to create your own world. That's when it gets really interesting. This is the point we have reached collectively. Let's not squander our opportunity. Thanks for being part of the Rebirth Revolution. It will take many dedicated souls to whip this place back into shape. You are a necessary participant. I hope you are finding ways to feel joy in these unusual times. Be sure to treat yourself and others well. We have a ways to go, so preparing for the long haul is going to be necessary. Until next week, breathe deeply. Ask others how they're doing. Ask how you can help. And let's make a better world. Remember, you are loved exactly as much as every other person on the planet. Not one ounce more or one ounce less. Stay strong and most of all, stay safe.